Hi everyone, welcome back. Today on our main homestead, we're gonna make an old-fashioned ginger beer. Before we get started, this is a very traditional recipe, simple recipe. I'm gonna make it outside on the fire. You're only using heat for less than 30 minutes, so a fire is almost overkill. But any excuse to be outside and to build a fire, and I'm in. So that's kind of why I'm making it this way. Um, I'm also a creature of habit. So this is a pretty simple recipe, but it's a recipe that I like. Um, everyone has different tastes. So I would encourage you to be a scientist. Number one, make a simple batch. Make Find a recipe that you think you'll like. Make that recipe and then let your taste guide you going forward as far as what tweaks you make to that recipe. Um, for instance, how much sugar? How sweet is it? Do you want to use less sugar? Be careful of how much sugar. You need enough sugar for the yeast to ferment, so you have to find a balance there. But how much ginger do you use? How do you process the ginger? I just coarsely chop the ginger and then as you'll see when we uh, strain it out, I do mash it into the strainer just to try to extract as much of that flavor as possible. But that's just one little tweak, but you could use a lot more ginger than I use. You could blend. Some people will put the ginger into the blender with a little bit of the water from the recipe and then blend it and you know, potentially extract a lot more of the ginger flavor out that way. You might use less ginger that way. So there's a lot of tweaks you can you can do. Um, I'm going to add lemon juice to mine. You may not want that. You may want to add other flavorings. There's a wide variety of herbs and, and ways to flavor a ginger beer. So let's go outside and get started. So while our water is heating up, we just need to get it to a simmer. Um, I'll walk you through the process real quick and then we'll get started. Um, if you haven't made a ginger bug or you don't know what a ginger bug is, um, I'll link to a video that where we made a ginger bug. You will, to do this recipe, you will need a ginger bug. If you don't have a ginger bug, so this is mine, I made mine in this crock. If you don't have a ginger bug, but you still want to make ginger beer, you can use uh, store-bought yeast. So you would want to use a, some type of brewer's yeast. An ale yeast um, is one of the more common ones. You can use champagne yeast. There's a lot of options. In a pinch, you could use bread yeast, just regular, you know, Fleischmann's you buy at the store. Probably cause some off flavors, potentially. Who knows, you might make a great ginger beer. You might really like it. Everybody's tastes are different. But this is my ginger bug. So again, if you don't have a ginger bug and you want to make this type of ginger beer, um, you're going to need to watch that video and make a ginger bug. It only takes about five days and then you're ready to go. But again, that's a, that takes place takes the place of using some type of store-bought yeast. This is stirring something with a ginger bug you're going to do every day for five days, several times. But um, it's really simple. It's a, uh, a very interesting process and a really cool process. So that's ginger bug. Again, I have just fed this and I'm stirring it because, um, and I'll explain a little more about that later, but I'm starting this ginger beer in the afternoon, so I'm going to let it sit overnight. Once you get it simmered, everything mixed, it's a great idea to let it sit overnight to let the flavors kind of really come out and, and mix into the, into the water. But, um, you don't have to do that you just really all you have to do is let it cool down to room temperature or to at least body temperature you don't want it um, you don't want it any warmer than that because that can start to degrade or kill the yeast and then that will that will potentially uh, stall your fermentation process so having said that this is going to sit again overnight i'll stir it again one more time this evening and then we'll pitch it in the morning um, but so ginger beer I put a ga I'm making a one gallon batch, so I put a gallon of water in my stock pot. Um, it's just going to get there. I'm letting it get warm up to simmering type heat. Very simple recipe. I'm going to throw in, and, and this can vary, um, but I'm going to throw in a cup and a half of brown sugar. 
Um, I just like brown sugar. I usually put it in coffee. Um, so I have, a, I have plenty of it on hand. But uh, brown sugar is just really refined sugar with molasses added. So um, one of the old-fashioned ginger beer recipes is actually, you're making ginger beer, but it's actually called maple beer. And this is back maybe 1700s or so. Um, and it's called maple beer because they use maple syrup. Um, again, so this has molasses in it. You can use molasses. There's a lot of variation that you can try. Um, this is a cup and a half of sugar, so it, and so roughly that amount of sugar. So if you wanted to do half and half, you could do half maple syrup or a quarter maple syrup and three quarters sugar. You, you get the idea. But that amount of sugars, and the sugar is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to help sweeten your ginger beer and give it a little bit of a sweetness to it but also it's at you're adding sugars that gives the yeast something to ferment so to help, help starting produce the alcohol so you've got to have some type of of sugar in there there are a wide variety of options to add in there are a lot of different flavorings you can add in I make mine very simple I love the taste of ginger I like ginger ale I like the the fizziness just store-bought ginger ale this recipe is similar. It's a little different, but it's similar. But again, um, I don't like it overly sweet. So I'm going with a cup and a half of sugar. You can go two cups. You could go two and a half cups. A lot of options. Um, and then I'm going with a half cup of ginger. And this is just the rough or uh, coarsely chopped ginger. Uh, same that we, that we did for the ginger bug. They are eight to quarter inch pieces, roughly. And hopefully you can see that. So and a lot of leave the skin on it's organic ginger um, I leave the skin on I don't wash it um, personal preference so you know feel free to, to make do with however you however you want uh, you'll notice in the ginger bug video you don't want to wash it because there are a lot of yeast and that's still true here there are a lot of yeast present on the skin of the ginger so you don't want to peel it and I don't want to wash it. You could wash it gently if you wanted to. Obviously, if it has dirt on it, wash the dirt off. You just don't want to scrub it. So, one and a half cups of sugar goes into the pot. Uh, the ginger goes into the pot. Let's see how warm it is. Oh yeah, I'd say we're good. So let's just dump our sugar in. Dump our ginger in. And you just want to stir it. You just want to get the get the sugar dissolved, which is going to dissolve pretty quick at this heat. Again, you don't you don't have to have this boiling. If it was a slight boil, fine, but it just really wants you just really want it to be like this steaming hot at a simmer um, but you just want to mix it in really good and then we're gonna let it simmer for about 15 minutes you can see the other ingredient that I have here is lemon juice so I squeezed two lemons uh, roughly I'd say maybe two ounces ish of lemon juice a um, quarter of a cup again and um, but just approximately I just squeeze two I usually don't measure it um, that will not go in but it goes in as a flavoring um, but it will not go in until after we pitch the yeast you want it to be room to our body temperature room temperature before you put the lemon juice in there to give it a chance to kind of mix in with everything so we'll let that so we'll let that simmer for about 15 minutes. Um, and then again, we're gonna let that sit overnight and just let those flavors kind of steep out like you were steeping a tea. Let them just really get uh, saturated as much as possible in that water. And then tomorrow we will strain that out, strain out the solids, pitch in our ginger beer, add in our lemon juice, and then we're ready to let it start fermenting. So I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so we're back inside, ready to put everything together. I let our mixture of water, sugar, and ginger sit outside last night after we took it off the fire. Um, it got down in the low 40s, so I brought it in this morning 
and put it on the wood stove, which stays warm well into July here, and it has to for the, as far as the nights go. Um, but anyway, so I've been letting it get up to body temperature, room to body temperature. You want to be able to touch it and it doesn't feel too cold or doesn't feel too hot, somewhere in that range. Again, what that's going to allow, that's going to allow the yeast to be at their optimum performance. Um, if it's too cold, they won't be very active potentially. If it's too hot, you can actually kill off or damage the yeast and they won't be able to uh, do their job. So I've got a strainer. We're going to strain out the ginger that's in our liquid. going to take that and pour everything through the strainer. Oops. Better to use a spoon. get all those good pieces of ginger out. So now we're ready to pitch our ginger bug yeast concoction. If you're gonna continue to use your ginger bug, so say you're gonna brew another batch relatively soon or you want to put them to put it to sleep for a week or so. Just be sure you take note of what the volume of or where the level is on your ginger bug, and then that's where you want to fill it back up to after you feed it. If you're going to put it in the fridge or continue feeding it, but we're going to pour in about half of this. I want to make sure I get some of the good ginger bits too. So we're just going to kind of mash all of this ginger, some of it from the bug, some of it from our, um, from our simmering yesterday. We're just going to try to mash this and get out as much of the flavor as possible. So with that filtered out and mashed, the last ingredient is our lemon juice. Again, about four tablespoons, two ounces, quarter cup of lemon juice. Again, I don't really measure it since I've done this a few times. Um, I just do two squeezed lemons and that's uh, good enough. And then you just want to give it a real good mix. Now we're ready to pour it in our carboy. So I did that down on the floor because I always spill and it's a lot harder to pour from here. I still spilt it. So if you're using a carboy or whatever vessel you're using, you'll notice that I left some headspace. That's um, almost two inches, an inch and a half, at least an inch of headspace that you want to leave into this. So here are two batches. The one on the left is the one that I just started, that we just finished. And the one on the right is one that I started several days ago, about four or five days. You can see the sediment around the neck of the carboy. That's just where everything is fermenting and it's uh, bubbling up and you're getting some yeast accumulation there. I'll give you a close-up so you can see what it should look like after several days. So you can clearly see a lot of bubbles uh, moving to the surface of the liquid. That is all yeast doing its job. That is the process of fermentation and that's what you want to see. So there you have it. Old fashioned ginger beer. Uh, this one, I will let it ferment. This is the one we just made. I'll let it ferment for about two weeks and then taste it and see where we're at. Uh, this one another week and a half or so and it should be ready to at least taste. Had a little bit of leftover. I'll just tell you 
Um, don't judge what these will taste like based on what it tastes like right after you've uh, kind of mixed everything together. This is very strong, still good. Very good, very gingery. Um, that'll all mellow out in the fermentation process. Obviously, very little to no alcohol in something like this. Once you get uh, about two weeks into fermentation, you'll be should be somewhere around four or five percent alcohol so something similar to a genuine beer so once it's done fermenting after the two weeks um it's time to bottle it if you want uh, traditionally a, a ginger beer was a green beer so you would drink it either sometimes straight out of the fermentation vessel or obviously with very little fermentation going on and definitely little aging it was it was consumed pretty quickly Mine will ferment for two weeks, so my process, I like it carbonated, so I like to produce a little bit of that fizz when it, once it's bottled. So I mix a priming solution, which is simply a small amount of warm water, two tablespoons of sugar per gallon. Um, mix that well to get the, the sugar dissolved into the solution. Then I take the contents of the carboy, siphon it into a one gallon jug, after the solution the priming solution is in there and then gently stir it you don't want to create a lot of turbulence you don't want to create a lot of aeration or bubbles gently stir it to mix it well once it's mixed then i siphon it from that jar into individual pint jars and seal the tops then you're done you can refrigerate it at that point um, but the purpose of the priming sugar is to allow whatever yeast is still remaining suspended in the solution to start processing some of those sugars, create bubbles as you've seen, and then that will create some carbonation and fizz in the individual pint glasses. And there you have it. That's my process. Um, good luck brewing your ginger beer. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section down below. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the video and please subscribe. We're going to be doing, obviously, more brewing videos, kombucha, mead, uh, maybe some more cheese making videos as well. But um, also a lot more things going on in the homestead once we get further into uh, summer. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.